Hey everyone, so uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. It's so windy out and uh, that's kind of why I'm talking to you really. This isn't gonna work. So put a lot of time into it and so I'm a bit disappointed. Sorry, the sun's in my eyes. Um, but me and four other people battled all day trying to get the sheet on and the wind, evident by the wind turbine there, is just too strong. We couldn't even hold on to it. It was just, it's just too much. There's no way it's gonna stay stood up in the wind we've been having. Which has been really unlucky with the weather. We, weather's really turned. So that, that whole idea is completely out. So uh, I've rented a barn, local barn, 100 pound a week, and we're gonna go and do the timber frame in there. So I've got to go and load up the logs, put them on the trailer, go to the barn. So yeah, got me timbers loaded up. I just need to strap them down and we're ready to go in the morning. Uh, hopefully it'll be dry, a bit drier because I've got to try and drag that trailer out of that mud. So yeah, it's going to be interesting, but the old Land Rover will do it, no problem. I've got confidence. So we've got to drag it all the way up the off-road track and it weighs about three tonne. But yeah, it'll do it. So uh, yeah, just uh, we'll carry on in the morning. Go to the bomb for the first day. Um, Let me just grab my gloves actually. Yeah. Right, so this is our barn. We've got the use of this little space here. It's plenty enough for what we need. We've got some of the timbers in. And uh, I'm gonna introduce you to Howard, the main timber framer. And we're gonna have a look at the wall we're gonna start with. And yeah, tomorrow we're gonna start dating out these timbers. So we're gonna put lines on them. This scribe fit this guy uses. And uh, we're gonna start making that first wall. We're showing the computer and I introduced to Howard. Right, so this is Howard. Hello. He's our main, the main timber framer. He owns uh, Timber Roots Timber Framing. Uh, well, Timber Roots or Timber Roots Carpentry. Yeah. Uh, I met Howard like seven or eight years ago when he used to run a sawmill. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so he's been doing this a long time. And he's basically going to be running the four plus me man crew of trying to basically turn my design into a proper timber frame and he's gonna teach me how to do it. So we'll have a look at the plan. We're gonna start with this small, long wall that's on the plan, and uh, it's probably one of the easier bits to do. So we start with that, and uh, yeah, I'll show you now. So yeah, this is my model, and this is the front. So there's the three bays, so there's the sawmill bay, and then the large bay, which is the barn, and then we've got this other bay here, which is gonna be for like lambing. Um, so what we're gonna start with is this wall here at the front, and it made a few changes on it, um, just changed the angle of the braces and a few little things that Howard recommended to make it look right. Um, but yeah, that's the wall we're gonna start with. And then Howard's redrawn it in, on the program he uses, just uh, so we can get all of the datum lines and work out where all the scarf joins go. And we've changed the angle of the braces a little bit, because on the model I did them at 45. And um, Howard was saying that with the traditional style we're using, that's not really what's done. So what are they now there? Well, they're, these are slightly different, but the most pleasing to the eye yeah. is usually using a golden ratio. Yeah. So usually we would lay them up 600 out, yeah. 900 down. Yeah. So they're not 45. Yeah. Um, they just look a bit nicer. And then I was going to put these uh, timbers in on like metal brackets afterwards, but we decided for a bit of extra rigidity, we're going to uh, mortise and tenon them in so they got get pulled hard up against the shoulder to add a little bit more rigidity to that frame. So yeah, that frame is going to get laid out tomorrow morning and then we'll get that whole thing built. And um, that's going to be the first thing we do. Right, right first day of framing. We've got all the timbers laid out. Howard's got his boys here. You're going to get to know everyone. 
But we got uh, Luca, Steve and Noi. You'll get to see them more closely. Um, we got our wall plate laid out for that frame. These are the posts for that frame. And I'm just gonna be taught how to do datum in. And I think Howard's gonna start laying out some scarf joints on the wall plate. So yeah, all exciting. Hey. So we just follow this line through then to the to the very edge. Yeah. Same both sides. Yeah. So this is dataming the timber. So you're trying to find the center points of all sides to give because these timbers are milled on a mill that's homemade. They're not necessarily square. They're not necessarily perfectly straight. Not straight enough for joinery anyway. So they need to make reference lines on all faces to measure from. So you're not measuring off edges. So that's what Nye's doing now. It's just laying them all out. So yeah, Howard's over here doing the same thing, dating me out this timber, and I think Howard's gonna start doing the scarf joints. For the scarf, we've got uh, four, uh, three 4.8 timbers and a 3.6 in the end, so, so three scarfs, is it, Howard? Yeah, yeah. three scarfs, joins four timbers. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just learning how to do all this stuff at the moment. You ready? Yeah, that looks cool. Nice! Right, Howard's gonna make the first scarf joint of three on the uh, wall plate for the small end of the frame. <laughs> It's going to be quite different for me because we're basically doing a, a week's worth of more than a week's worth of work that I'd normally do yeah. in a day. Yeah, so yeah, things yeah. are going to move a lot quicker than I used to. Yeah. So that's our ten and width. Yeah. Longer than I thought. Basically. Nugget. stay down at yours rather than yeah carrying it back and forward down that is a serious that. slick you got there she's right in it yeah it was pretty rusty before the other day it's a beast i've used it for a while but i got a new sharpness so right we've had a little bit of a change of plan to keep everyone working we're going to do two frames at the same time so this one now is going to be the, one of the bigger frames, one of the bigger middle frames. And then you're going to start building the smaller frame that I showed at the start of this video over on the other side. I'll show you now. So yeah, we were going to just lay out and start this right. one frame here. But now it's change of plan because I want to use some worse timbers on this because it's mostly not shown. Um, so we're going to do this, the plate that you've just seen Howard working on is this one here now because it's visible 
uh, on the inside of this building at the top floor. So we're going to do this frame. So that frame there and that frame at the same time. Right, so I have been put on brace duty. So this is the, our brace template that we've done off the model. So I'm going to cut this out of plywood. So that's our brace there. So I'm going to get this cut out. And then we use that as a template on the brace stock. And I'll try and get all these braces cut out today. This is going to be what all of the braces are cut out to, so it needs to be right. Right, we're recording, yeah. yeah. Right. So first, scarf first scarf over. joint. Do we need to ratchet it? Yeah. Slack yeah. Pull that out. Pull that out. So yeah, first scarf joint done. You have a bit of a step in it here, but this is a little bit oversized, this timber. It'll get planed down once everything's known to be lined up. And Howard's just run a string line all the way down the two that are joined so that he knows that they're actually straight with each other. So that it's a string going all the way down the center of this reference line. And so that's how you know they're not got a big buckle in the middle and that the wall will be straight. Back to the barn with another load of timber and uh, boys got on well last night, uh, lots of scarf joints going on. So the long wall frames, we're doing two wall frames at the side, one each side. The long wall frame, the, or the long posted wall frame is getting scarfed together here. Howard finished that one off yesterday uh, and then Steve's just doing another scarf down this end now. Table scarf. And then Howard has managed to get two table scarfs done on the other wall plate. And he's just fitting them now. Once they're done, they're going to get laid up in a straight line, post lined up with them, and then scribe fit all the joints for those, uh, for all the posts and the braces and everything. Uh, I've just bought another piece of stock for doing braces because we rejected one piece because it had a ring shake. In fact, that's it there. You can see the big crack down it. So we rejected that, so I need one more brace. Let's get them done quickly, and then we're gonna probably be scribing all the joints, I would've thought today. Yeah, it's coming along.
Yeah, flunk with a big mallet. Certainly can. Ready? Yeah. Cool, that'll do it. Jerks. Yeah, you're saying you bolt these as well, do you? Um, I've tended to more recently. Through the two flats? Yeah, just sort of one the there, one there. These are quite different because they're not really load bearing right but because you've got your stud wall underneath, underneath it yeah and all of your posts or all of your principal rafters are landing over on the, top the posts, of your posts yeah exactly so like if this was a standard wall plate with rafters all the way along then yeah. it would be load bearing yeah and yeah. then you've got the then you'd have your brace coming under it uh, right. you'd have your brace coming in and past it this. yeah because what you can get is obviously this is only four inch, so you can end up with like a tear. Yeah, yeah. Down through exactly. here. Exactly. Really, you're just making it a four inch timber. Timber, if you don't yeah. Do that. yeah. That's the yeah. problem with this sort of half yeah. flat joint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So I was just jointing this now, so we know these are pulled up, so I can go from our center of post yeah. to end of scar. Yeah. So if we've lost any distance, yeah. We now now I'm going to mark the scarf length off of here yeah taking off the cad drawing yeah and then if yeah like i say if we've lost any length we can add it on now yeah yeah cool nice one thanks howard uh, lifting that in there is it okay. oh look at that lovely looks really good it's a fine bit of work, Steve. Really tight. So Steve's now just checking all of his level references to make sure it's sitting level, because obviously you squeeze the joint up and the joint's now holding it in a certain plane. So he just wants to check that that is still the plane he expects it to be in from the level references that were marked on from the uh, initial uh, dataming. So that's his level reference there. Planed it, marked it, and then every time you set a timber up, make sure it's level off of there. And then when a joint's been squeezed up, in case the joint's twisted the timber, check it. If that's level, the joint's all lined up. As far as I understand it, anyway. It's about right, is it, Steve? Right, so the boys are just getting the uh, posts in place and they're going to start laying out all the uh, posts and then once they're all laid out and spaced equally and in the right places and measured all the lines, the reference lines and everything, they scribe then the joints, which I don't know how to do, so I'm going to have to learn how to do that. Yeah, yeah. Hold That's actually really good. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Right, so we've got our first wall plate. This is the short wall plate, the one on the left of the building. These are all laid up level, spaced correctly, as they're gonna sit when the building's done. So now they can scribe down off of those joints to get the joints all square, because obviously these timbers are not straight, flat, square, or anything like that. Not to any degree of accuracy that's required. But now it's all sat in the way we want it. Now they scribe the joints. So, uh, Howard's just finishing the last scarf joint of this wall plate, and then we're gonna fit in the mid rails. So we just marked a line for these mid rails, and so now these mid rails are going in. Uh, I, when I was milling, I got some pretty crappy timbers with a bit of sapwood and stuff, so we're using those for the mid rails because they're not really uh, needed to be good and strong. They're not really doing anything other than offering a bit of a uh, uh, lateral support so yeah we're going to use the worst timbers for them so we're going to get them lined up now so there's a bit of a view of it from higher up so you see how long it is it's a bit of a beast so we've got wall plate that's uh, not quite finished yet the scarf joint i was just about to pull that up now and then those three posts and there's another two because there's five posts and then there's four mid rails and then eight braces and that's for one wall and i've finished the braces they're all sat over in the corner there i've planed them and they're ready to be lined up and marked up as well
So yeah, got my braces done as well. Well, just for this one wall anyway. Everything at the top is four inch braces. Everything on the lower floor is three inch braces. It's coming along and as we're doing it, it just seems to just be getting bigger and bigger and cooler and cooler. I mean, look at the size of all this stuff. It's gonna be so cool. So these are the worst timbers. You see I've got a bit of bark left on. Yeah, then not too bad, but it's not that great. And there's a couple of bad ones down the other end. So that is a mid rail. One, two, three. Right, so we just squared off this post with three, four, five, and now we can measure all the other posts off of this one. So we've got this center line here, this datum line. This is now square with the top plate, and now we can measure all of the distances we need off of this one to get them all lined up. So Howard is just finishing up that last uh, scarf joint on this wall plate. We've got the tape clamp down here this post is squared off and set where it's going to be now we're measuring from the center line to center line from the cad model which is uh, 3.4 meters from center to center post number two and post number two so we have to have the tape on our mark at 350 so it needs to come just a tiny little bit there we go there we go you've just finishing off the last scarf joint for the other wall plate So Steve's just fitting up these last, uh, why can I never remember what the joint's called? Scarf joint. Scarf joint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Steve's doing the last of the scarf joints for this wall plate. Howard's doing the last of the scarf joint for the other wall plate. And then me and the boys have got those posts laid out. They're showing me how to do it. I'm getting the hang of it. And then we've just fitted the first mid rail just in there. The boys are just getting the lines ready for the second mid rail, which is gonna go in there. So it's all going ahead. Yeah, I know we yeah, should. Careful. Yeah. careful with the uh, transformer. And yeah, the big I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right. We've got stuff under us here. Let me get on that end. I'll pull it around then. Right, Howard, cheers for that. Thanks, good week. We didn't do bad two days. We haven't done bad for two days. This is the, the scarf joints. So the scarf joints take the time. I know when I did them on my workshop, they took me all day to do two. But yeah, this, like, obviously, that takes a little bit of time to lay up, but now that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven joints. Yeah. Which will be, yeah. And then all the braces. Yeah. All the braces, yeah. Cool. So yeah, probably a couple more days on this wall frame. We'll yeah. There, I reckon. It's good going. All, all right, morning, everyone. Tuesday morning, we had the weekend and Monday off, and uh, back in the barn. So last thing you saw was we laid all these out, got them all squared to each other and all the post uh, distances correct. And now we're just scribing all the lines for the joins. There's one left to do. I'm gonna show you how to do it because I've just been shown how to do it. And then we're all gonna start cutting out all the joins for these. Uh, we're doing it in two sections. There's this section and then this yeah. one's separate, even though that it is one wall. So yeah, I'm going to just scribe this, Steve scribing that one, yeah. and then we're probably all going to get on just cutting out all, this, all these joints. Right, so I've been entrusted to scribe this, and uh, they do a thing called level scribing, which is basically, so this is the shoulder, well, this face of this timber here is probably not square. I know you can't really see it, but it's probably not square because it's just rough sawn off a mill. So I want to transfer that line this 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 face 
up here. So when this timber drops down, it lines up with that face. Um, um, but you can see that this face that I'm taking it off of isn't actually, it's got a lump in it and it's not level. So it needs to come over that way a little bit, like that. So, and we've ended up with about a millimetre difference, which is actually pretty good. So yeah, I've got this tiny little gap down, down here. So that edge is marked up against the level. And then this mark is whatever that gap is just there, which is about a millimetre and a half. So now as that timber comes down, it will match that face. Yeah, that makes sense now. So now it's just a case of joining those two lines up, uh, which I can do with that. So join those two lines up there. And then do the same on the other side. So now that we've done one face, so that, that one's marked out for the tenon. So now we've got to do the same thing for the mortise. So it's a little bit out, it's pretty close though. I think that's right. Right, so while I'm uh, laying out some scribes, Howard's going in and doing some uh, cuts with the saw to make sure the mortising machine doesn't tear it all out too bad. So just scribing up this other one. So those there are two cuts so that when the mortising machine goes in, it doesn't tear out the corners. So the guys have got a pretty genius way of putting clearance on the tenons because they've got the T-square and the normal square and the T-square is metric and the normal square is uh, imperial and as a result uh, there's just a slightly difference in size and that slight difference in size gives them their tolerance gives a bit of clearance in there so they're not battling with, the, with everything do you know all the time fighting the joints to go together so T square is T for tenon. So that that's the tenon. Tenon. Alright, so I've done my first scribe. So tenon and mortise. And as this post comes down here, it should match up with this face if I did it right. <laughs> When you do the last piece now, yeah. the two-inch mortise, you yeah. should turn the... Turn it, so it's cutting downwards. Yeah, yeah. downwards. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. cool. So do that. Well, mortise, just ready for cleaning out. So this cuts the opposite direction to mine. So my one cuts down, and you end up with a curve on the edge, down in there. This one cuts the opposite way around, which is way faster and better, but you end up with a curved bottom to it. Yeah, Luke's done a nice job. Just clean up with the chisel. So I've been spending a lot of time doing all the filming and making sure all the materials are here and all that side of things. So I haven't actually had much of a chance to do any woodwork. But uh, 
everyone's working away now, so finally doing a bit of work. So we're just cleaning up this mortise now. Right, so we've just done a good session of uh, cutting out mortises and tenons. I've been, uh, Luke has been boring the mortises. Uh, me and Nye have been cleaning them up. And Luca is now cleaning some up as well. And then Steve and Howard have been working on the tenons and getting them ready to go. And we're now ready to do a test fit of the first uh, couple of posts. Yeah, right in the turbine, and then just so there's a finished tenon ready to go in, chamfered edges so they match those curves that the mortiser leaves. Money shot. Money shot. Oh, she's tight. Will it wiggle? Yeah. It will probably it wiggle then. Just go, yeah. Okay, well that'll be fine for getting this thing here then, yeah? Yeah. Okay, and then? Yeah, okay. Not all the way. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, I reckon it probably will. Alright, try and squeeze up these joints. Nice and tight, good. Oh, look at that, lovely. It's a bit snug. I was standing up there. <laughs> yeah. Looking good, right? He's <laughs> such a beast. What have I done? What have I done? So we're just doing the first test fit going along, just doing all the Getting the whatever, it's, it's just really all tight the first time you do it, and there's a lot of jiggling around and checking, making sure everything's square, and there's quite a few to do. So that's post number three of five. Oh, look at that. That was good. Right, strapage. Just take the weight off that closer. So this is a bit tight, really. Yeah. A bit tight. Yeah. Right, so everyone's just been going along doing uh, kerf cuts and getting all the joins really tight and pricking the holes and doing the draw pegging like I've shown before many times in videos. We don't need to go over it again. And so all this joinery is now tight down here. Me and Luca are just uh, 
uh, kerf cut in the ones down there. Uh, we've still got to lay up this mid rail because we did this in two sections. That one's not laid up at the moment. Um, but because this end's done and podgered and fixed, uh, Howard's going to start scribing the braces in place. Yeah, all going on. Uh, Nye's over here on the braces. Just measuring the, the, where they need to be, setting them out, and then he's going to scribe them. Oh, that lumpy. Yeah, the big braces. Chunky. Chunky. Because so, I'm so used to them being three inches. Yeah. Rather than four. Well, the, uh, the other ones are three inch. I just yeah. thought I'd mix, have some fours and some threes. Mix them up. It's going to look cool though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like, yeah, they look a bit more, well, it's, they're nice when they're four inch. Yeah. Forward. Well, it works out as well with the um, stud wall. Yeah. So we're starting to get a feel for what it's going to look like. Awesome. So we've got some uh, brace scribing going on. Why do you use a string for braces, Howard? Uh, because we can't get the level in this. Oh, um, uh, into the gap. Acute yeah, angle. I see. Um, so the string so goes into the corner. We have to do these scribes with a plumb bob, which is sort of traditionally how they would have done it. Yeah. It is good practice, but it's a lot quicker. Yeah. The, find more accurate with the... The level yeah, seems to be quite efficient. Yeah, it's nice. So you can be like, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I think we should have this wall frame done probably by tomorrow, I think. So it's getting uh, late in the day. I'm just marking out the uh, tenons on the wind braces. Okay. Okay, right, another day. So everyone's here. So today this frame's probably gonna be done, provided nothing goes wrong. So everyone's just scribing up that last mid rail that we needed to do that we left out because did it in two sections. Uh, I've been marking out these tenons on the braces. So braces are, are marked out. Steve's gonna start cutting these out. Uh, once they're all cut out, everything's got to come apart and then uh, cut out everything again because Howard's already scribed all the mortise and tenons for the braces. So it's just a case of taking it all apart and then doing what we did yesterday again, fitting everything up. And then once that's done, that's that wall frame done. Then we start the other wall frame.
All right, all going well. First brace fitted to both sides individually and Howard's just marked up peg holes. So we're going to have three peg holes on the bottom one because it's a really long mortise and two on the tops. Sorted. So we got, uh, there's a bit of a rock pocket in the end of this log and um, it looked like it would probably cut out but it travels in quite a bit further than we thought it would. So Howard's just gonna uh, clean it out, get rid of the rot and put a slip tenon in. He said he wouldn't normally do this but I'd, we've, we've laid everything up and I'd like to use the timber so we're gonna uh, put a slip tenon in there. And it's not a critical piece either, it's only a mid rail. So yeah, we're doing that to save me milling a whole new timber and uh, it will hold us up big time as well. So Howard's gonna do a repair on that. Right, so there we go. Howard's got that done and uh, ready for some pegs. So we're gonna glue it, peg it. And uh, it's only a mid rail anyway, so. But that looks like it's gonna be a nice tidy job, to be honest. A tidy spike this first. Press pressure. Ah, that drill is effectively. So that is an offset pricker for the hole. So, because it's draw pegging, which I've shown lots of times on the channel, uh, Howard's got a special tool which has a little uh, offset point so you can just locate that in the hole and it, it fixes your offset for you without you know I always end up manually drilling them and then they're quite inconsistent some are really tight some aren't so tight but yeah with a little tool like that you get the offsets just right each time Right, so how it's got that repair done, lovely job. So that saved that whole bit of timber and a load of time. And that'll be absolutely fine because that's uh, this beam's sitting on here, but it's just a mid rail. So we're, we're good, we're all good. So I've been fitting braces, uh, Luca and I have been fitting braces and mortising. And then Steve's finished all the braces and now he's uh, tidying up mortises. So it's all going on, busy, busy, busy. I know it's loud in here, but I can't do much about that. I can't stop people working just to, uh, just to film. So there's the uh, brace curve, very elegant, I think. Pretty pleased with that. And nice tight joins as well. I've just been working on them. So yeah, we'll get all those fitted and then it'll be assembly. Oh no, drilling peg holes. There we go, we're getting the first layup happening. Boys are getting the braces installed. So Luca's drilling peg holes and uh, Howard and Steve are getting the mid rails in and trying to line the braces up. Just trying to line everything up all at the same time. Isn't that easy? But they're getting it done. So Steve and Howard are just getting all the uh, test fits done, first test fit of all the braces. 
and it's going together right. We're looking at the back side of the building at the moment. This is the back, this is the bit that won't be seen. It will be cladded, um, so it's the other side that's actually the bit that we will see from the inside. But, gives you an idea of size and scale. All right, it's coming together. We're just doing a few uh, kerf cuts. Uh, it's just a few little gaps, but it's close. I'm having a hard time keeping the lens from steaming up today. So it's a bit of a miserable wet day out, but we're getting there. Hopefully fit it up today. Very, very close. Cool. End right. of the day. End of the day kerf cuts from underneath. So Howard's end up drawing the short straw here. Oh, voluntarily so doing the upside down underneath kerf cuts. Really they're so pretty cool. close. They're pretty close, but they just need a little gap and it'll help pull up some other little gaps. But that's the side we'll see from the inside. So now is just chisel marking all of the different timbers so we know where everything goes. So what's that? This now is number that's one number one. On the mid rail. So uh, this will be number one on the post, number yeah. one brace, number I see. one on the top rail, and then two, 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 wow. yeah. etc. Cool. Yeah, I've always just put them on a pencil, but then they get wet and then you lose them. This so is it. yeah, yeah. So chisel marks. Yeah, you put all this work and then you, you get them muddled up. That's it. Just, uh, be a disaster. Cool. So, yeah. The way the professionals do it. What are you doing, Howard? I am offset pricking all of the tenons so when we take it apart, we can drill the rest of the peg hole with the drawer. Because you're all happy with the way it's sitting now? Yeah, so it's all fitted. There's some we're not quite happy with, but yep. some of it will just be fluff caught in the shoulder, which yep. we can clean out when it's apart. When it comes apart, yeah. And any that we think might have a lot of fluff caught in them we can just give them slightly more draw clean it up and it will just pull up really tight then cool looking good mate okay so that is going to conclude this video so i think you'd agree it turned out great howard and the boys did a great job so that was about uh, five days work to get to that frame so uh, howard's uh, link to his um, website Timber Roots Carpentry will be in the description because you can see he's a very talented carpenter and yeah so that's one wall frame done and in the next video we'll be starting to do wall frame two. Wall frame two is the same except it doesn't have the mid rails and it's uh, still got longer posts. Yeah okay so that's going to conclude this video and uh, hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.